So welcome to today's show. Uh, we're really pleased to have uh, with us uh, today, Norel Joseph. He's with the Antigua and Barbuda Visitors Bureau, and he's going to share some information about Antigua and Barbuda and uh, accessibility. So Norel, you want to tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Thank you so much, Kenneth. And it's great to always share information about our twin island destination of Antigua and Barbuda, where the beach is just the beginning. As you mentioned, my name is Norel Joseph, and I'm the sales and marketing manager here in the United States with the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Authority. And we're always happy to share tidbits and promote our beautiful twin island destination of Antigua and Barbuda, where the beach is just the beginning. Okay, so let's, let's start with the, I'm visiting on a cruise. Right. I, I travel with a mobility device, either wheelchair, scooter, walk, or something like that. And so I'm in town for the length of the time that the port stop would be. So what are some of the things that are accessible that would be on your list of things to recommend for people? St. John's, several portions of the city is accessible for those who do need those accommodations, especially if you're coming in on a cruise, you're coming right off, right up into the port of St. John's Harbor into Heritage Key or Recliffe Key. So you can uh, certainly stroll along the boardwalk and visit many of the stores and restaurants that are right along the boardwalk there and several shopping facilities that are also there for you to, to certainly get you some of that local art and craft of the destination. Uh, a number of restaurants are also available right within the Heritage Key Recliffe Key area where your cruise ships are docked. So you can certainly enjoy much of the culinary delights of the destination right at the cruise dock. Okay. And so let's say I wanted to get out a little bit farther and see more of Antigua. What would be some good options for that? We certainly like to highlight we have 365 gorgeous beaches, plus that extra beach, 366 for the leap year. And certainly, if you have the time to, we want you to go and enjoy a beach or two or three, however many you can choose to visit. There's several beaches that are within um, very close proximity to the cruise docking area. And then, of course, go and visit our heritage and historical sites, Shirley High and Nelson's Dockyard, which is all a part of our UNESCO World Heritage Site, where we've certainly preserved a lot of our artifacts from our colonial past. So, you know, the old forts, the old cannons, you can head to Fort James where there's also a beach and the old ruins of the fort, which was used to protect St. John's Harbor as well. So there's quite a few things that you can do in and around that area, around St. John's, and of course, on the outskirts of the destination. We're a very small island, so it's very easy to get around to us and to see several areas on the island within, uh, if, especially if you're coming on a cruise and you only have a few hours, there's certainly a few things you can pack into the number of hours that you're there in port. Okay, so how about accessible transport? How available is that? So that say I'm traveling with a, a scooter and I would like to go do some sightseeing. Is that pretty easy to find accessible transport? So uh, there are a few that are available on island wheelchair accessible buses, et cetera, that are available. It would be helpful to make a few of those arrangements in advance so that you have that option available to you without delay on your arrival. But certainly getting around should not be difficult. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to have your own personalized tours and, and so forth, that could be arranged as well. Okay, all right, very nice. And are any of the beaches accessible? Many of the beaches, you know, you can certainly stroll right up to the beach, drive right up to the high water mark for several of the beaches. Of course, you can't go beyond a certain point with your car or, or bus. It, it all depends on, on the experience you're really looking for. If 
it, it, I imagine if you're using a scooter or so, it would be hard for you to actually go into the sand with your scooter. If you're, for instance, if you were probably to do maybe a day pass at one of the hotels or so, or arrange a private tour uh, with one of the companies, they would certainly be able to help in making those arrangements so that you can get up close to the beach as much as possible. And possibly there may be one or two tours that may offer you the beach wheelchairs as well to get you right into the water if you're looking for that experience. Okay. All right. And what about the forts? Are, are they, have they been updated where they are accessible or are they not? So certainly you can visit the forts. They are all accessible depending on which one you're going to, especially, you know, if you're going up to Shirley's Heights and the old blockhouse, as we called it, where on the south side of the island within that UNESCO World Heritage Site area, the, that fort protected us, the southern part of the island from French invasion from neighboring Guadeloupe, which is just to our south. You could certainly, if you're going up to blockhouse, you can certainly go right up to the cliff top and just look over and see that beautiful water. You can certainly make it it's accessible so you could, you know, get as close to the action as much as possible. And if you went over to Shirley's Heights, where we do our sunset barbecue party every Sunday night, which gives you that picturesque backdrop, backdrop of the English Harbor Nelson's Dockyard area. And that's the photograph that you're actually looking at on my screen in the bottom left of your screen. That's the view you get from Shirley Heights, Nelson's Dockyard. That is the UNESCO World Heritage Area where you see the sailboats, etc. cetera. Um, that's the Antigua Naval Dockyard. And so you could really roll right up to the wall and have that fantastic view and really enjoy uh, a beautiful day on the destination. Oh, that is so beautiful. It is it's amazing. Yes. Um, in the white sand, I was looking at the one by the uh, phone booth. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. And of course, behind you, all of that is, is such a beautiful place. It is. It is. And okay. you know, if you're fortunate to get over to our sister island of Barbuda, which uh, on the um, right of the screen, you know, has that beautiful pink sand. Okay, so how accessible is Barbuda? Barbuda is not a lot of development on the island. Very few um, resort properties on, on Barbuda. It might not be as accessible as Antigua. It, it certainly might have its limitations. If you were able to make prearranged tours, I'm sure accommodations would, would be available to be made in advance of your arrival. So in a typical port stop, mm -hmm. Uh, for somebody that needs accessible transportation, they've made arrangements in advance. What kind of uh, time frame are we talking about to see most of the attractions on the island? You said it's a small island. Yeah, it's a small island. You can get around it and possibly, uh, depending on the number of stops that you're making, you can get around it uh, in fairly quick time. They're full day tours, they're half day tours, depending on what you want to see. Uh, but if you're going to possibly just maybe do a beach stop and um, then perhaps stop at uh, Shirley Heights or in the UNESCO World Heritage Site area or, or go up to Betty's Hope and see uh, one of the old sugar plantations where, you, where we actually still have the windmill and et cetera there. You could certainly do that in, in, in three, four hours, certainly add some additional time for your beach stop. So it really depends on what you're looking to do on your tour that can be tailored to, to meet the time frame that you do have on island. Okay. So now let me ask you, what are your, I, I think I already know one of them would be the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Right. And then what are, give me two more of your top, your favorite places to visit. Certainly if I'm heading to Antigua, that's home for me. So it's certainly always going home to see my family and enjoying some of mom's home cooking. <laughs> so certainly not that I'm going to be inviting the world into my mom's kitchen. As that's what it as sounded I'm, like to me. <laughs> <laughs> but as much as she would enjoy, because she absolutely loves to um, prepare food, but I'm sure she would love having you. Uh, but certainly uh, for me, uh, getting home would be ideal. I love going to Shirley Heights. 
as you mentioned, for that Sunset Barbecue Party. It's absolutely phenomenal where we have the live steel band and the live reggae band and so forth. Going to some of the favorite spots around the island, some of the local restaurants, Dennis's Beach Bar and Restaurant, OJ's or Sheer Rocks or Beach Limers at Fort James, certainly stopping at one of those local hot spots where you can certainly get some of that scrumptious cuisine. And if you want to take in a little bit of the history and culture of the destination, visiting the museum in St. John's is really right within uh, a short distance of the cruise dock, or you can visit the museum at Nelson's Dockyard as well. So certainly some of those experiences are highly recommended to really get to know the destination. But of course, you can't be in Antigua and not make some time for the beach. So any one of our 366 beaches would be ideal for that as well. So those are definitely the top options for me. Okay, so now let me, let me I'm gonna ask you a, a question a little off topic because sometimes uh, people that are traveling with challenges may have uh, family members that are, that are into beaches and may have uh, be looking for water that is at least reasonably calm. Is there a beach that's close uh, that fits that bill where it's usually uh, they can get in and swim if they wanted to and play without I know sometimes the waves can get up in some of the, on some sides of the islands. We're very blessed to have two experiences on the island on the west coast, pretty much the north to the west to the southwest. We have the Caribbean Sea, which of course would be the Kama Seas. And then on the, the east and the southeast, we have the Atlantic Ocean. Certainly the beaches on the west coast would be considered some of the Kama beaches. But you can find very calm beaches on the east coast of the destination as well. Because the beautiful thing about Antigua, a lot, many of our beaches are protected by reefs or are in coves. Some of the more popular beaches, for instance, Long Bay on the eastern side of the island is on the Atlantic side. But it's so calm and swimmable that kids and families frolic there because it's so calm but certainly if you're looking for something that's within close proximity to the cruise terminal so you don't have to venture out very far Fort James Beach Deep Bay as well as Dickinson Bay or Runaway Beach you have several beaches right along the west and northwestern coast which are within very close proximity to the cruise terminal that would certainly be able to provide that calm sea for those who do want to indulge. And you mentioned there were some resorts that have day passes? Yes, they certainly do. So, you know, the Sandals Grand Resort, of course, which is for adults, or you have family-friendly resorts such as St. James's Club or uh, the Veranda Resort or Blue Waters Resort. Several of the resorts on the island do offer day passes. But of course, you know, depending on whether it's adults or families with kids are involved, then you determine which property would be most suitable for you. Okay. All right. Very nice. Now, let's say that I had some time to spend. Let's say I fly in and I've got four or five days. Yeah. So now how would you structure those four or five days? Well, that's the ideal experience, actually. While we do welcome cruisers to the destination, I really like to tell folks, you can't really experience us in just a few hours. But still, hopefully you would have visited us for a few hours and would have enticed you to want to come back and spend four or five nights or even longer with us. And for instance, if you do happen to come and spend uh, a few days with us, you know, certainly you're, the day you arrive, you want to probably just take that time to really relax the next day and certainly get to the beach certainly be the, make that your first stop typically the flights get into us just around two three four in the afternoon by the time you arrive on island it's just in time for you to have that first cocktail right on the beach and enjoy that first beautiful sunset depending on your resort you can certainly have great views of a beautiful sunset then of course the next day, you want to go out and do some tours and excursions and possibly uh, maybe even try a different beach separate from the one where your resort is at. And uh, I always want, like to encourage folks to at least try a local restaurant on the next day. So even if you're on an all-inclusive resort, 
uh, you want to get out and have some of that local cuisine and try some of that local culinary delight, which you'll find at any number of the beach bars and restaurants in and around St. John's or on the outskirts of the villages and, and neighborhoods around Antigua. If you happen to be there on a Thursday or Sunday night, then certainly head up to Shirley's Heights for that sunset barbecue party, where you can certainly see the sights and sounds of the destination uh, and that steel band and all of the, the great music that takes place. And you can certainly be entertained by throughout that period. And then, of course, you know, on the final days, you can continue to just relax and enjoy the beach. And if you do still go on a couple of other tours and excursions as well. So there's quite a lot to do. We have over 100 different activities that you can participate in. You can swim with the stingrays and so forth if you're open to that type of to that type of activity. There's quite a few things you could do to choose from. It all just depends on the type of experience that you're looking for. Okay. And if you don't know the answer to this, that's I apologize for the question. But what about in the harbor? Are, any, are there any of the boats that operate tours around? Water-based tours that are accessible that you know of? Uh, yes, yes. Some of the, we have several catamarans that offer day tours or island tours. You can do a full 360 degree tour, which takes you around the entire island by boat. So you really get to see the destination extensively. And of course, they do offer you lunch and drink service as well on the boat if you're so inclined to, to enjoy that. Of course, there are the catamarans that will take you out on just tours of some of the reef or probably just go out for a stroll at sunset, maybe something nice and romantic if you're looking for that as well. So yes, there's certainly quite a few options right there. Um, and several of these, several of them will pick you up on your resort beach particularly if you're on the West Coast and Northwest. And then, of course, you'll go into St. John's, just the same area where you come in for the cruise ships. They'll set sail from, from St. John's right there. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, you've mentioned Barbuda. And so if I wanted to go to Barbuda, you said uh, there are resorts on the island? Uh, yes, so there are two main properties on the island currently, the Barbuda Bell, which is a small boutique property, just six bungalows. Then you also have the Barbuda Cottages, which is another boutique property, just about five or five bungalows as well. And then you have a number of guest houses and cottages that you could choose from. You could also even go glamping on Barbuda at the Frangiapani, uh, which also offers you that exclusive beach camping type experience. Some very upscale as well type of glamping. I mentioned various guest houses and, and, and cottages to choose from. Uh, getting to Barbuda, you do so via the ferry. Uh, there are three ferries that head over to Barbuda, the Barbuda Express, the Island Escape, and the Lady Caroline. Or if you choose, you could fly, um, fly over to Barbuda, either on the aircraft or on the helicopter, which takes 15 minutes by plane, 90 minutes, an hour and a half by boat. Okay. All right. All right. Well, very nice. Um, that sounds like, it sounds like an amazing place to visit. Hopefully I'll get a chance to get there one of these days. I'm busy working on thinking about places I want to go because doing this just makes me want to leave. Yes. I, you know, after a year cooped up, I'm ready to go see somewhere like uh, beautiful, like uh, Antigua and Barbuda. Absolutely. We like to say, you know, you could have that James Bond type vacation where you have breakfast in Antigua, lunch in Barbuda, and then you're back in Antigua for dinner. <laughs> yeah, very good. And, and you want your martini shaken, not stirred. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, for those of you that are watching, if you haven't subscribed, I always appreciate it when people do. I want to say thanks to jo Narel so Josephs for staying with us and uh, sharing his beautiful, beautiful homeland. Like I said, it's accessible and it's gorgeous. So it might be the place you want to put on your list. We'll see everybody next time. Thank you so much.